actionfiguresresource.com. Just what exactly were Rock Lords? To explain that, we need to explain the GoBots, which were a Tonka-created Japanese toy line of transforming robots created in 1983 with an American Hanna-Barbera-produced animated series named Challenge of the GoBots, or Mighty Robots, Mighty Vehicles. The Rock Lords themselves were not vehicles, they were rocks, but we'll come to that in a minute. The GoBots were a group of good guy and bad guy transforming robots who came from an alien planet named Gobatron. I'll stop with the plot details, it's basically the same thing as Transformers. The GoBots TV show ran for 65 episodes from 84 to 85 and there was a spin-off movie named Challenge of the Rock Lords which actually got released in theatres in 1986, coincidentally the same year as the Transformers animated movie. Now, with this movie, the Rock Lords hit just as the rest of the GoBots were being wrapped up, so it was really an attempt to give a shot in the arm to the ailing franchise competing with Hasbro's almighty Transformers, which was itself beginning to have difficulty competing with the amount of toy line and cartoon combos hitting shelves and screens in the 1980s. The Rock Lords were the usual mix of heroic and goofy heroes, led by their brave leader, Boulder, see what they did there, against the tyrannical Magmar and his small army of psychopathic, bickering, somewhat incompetent evil rocks. There were two waves of regular rock lords with three goodies and three baddies in each. The third wave had two regular old rock baddies and the three good jewel lords, which were constructed of transparent plastic. For collectors, the ones to seek out are the last produced waves of shock rocks and combining fossil lords. There were also Gnarlies, who were little furry companions, Rockosaurs, which were exactly like they sound, and two vehicles including this monument to the antithesis of aerodynamics, a plane made of rock. I actually had several of these, and they entered rotation into my play mix. As I recall, they were simple and fun to transform back and forth with some nice texture, and a mix of the chunky and the detailed secreted around their form. Unfortunately, Tonka had overlooked what I like to call the Josh Baskin principle, which is where the character of the same name, played by Tom Hanks in the movie Big, himself a 12-year-old boy grown to adulthood overnight and somehow employed by a Manhattan-based toy company as their primary tester, questioned during a meeting the fun factor in playing with a transforming skyscraper. In effect, there are a million robots that turn into other things, but you need to ask yourself as a manufacturer, what's fun about playing with a rock? An item found freely in nature and not known for its overabundance of speedy activity. Frankly, it's amazing this line lasted as long as it did and it wasn't laughed off shelves. This comes down to a combination of projected confidence in their marketing and commercials and some actually pretty cool robot designs. Control their appearance, but no force in the universe can contain the power and the fury of Rock Lord. Shaking, quaking, flashing, breaking, Rock Lord, powerful living rock. He sold separately new from Tonka. Besides which, you could fold these guys up and put most of them comfortably in your pocket, which made taking them places far easier. Now that's harder to do with a fighter jet with lots of removable weapons and awkward points. Now here's an interesting prospect. Hasbro bought out Tonka in 1991, and with it the GoBots name. Hasbro now technically owns this whole franchise, and it has entered into canon as an alternate Transformers universe with longtime GoBot fans. Hasbro also recently announced that it wants a shared cinematic universe for its Transformers movies, much like Marvel. And while some might scoff at the lack of variety within the Transformers mythology, it is minutely possible that the Rock Lords might one day slam onto the big screen in some cameo that tests the waters of people's interest in transforming rocks. Go figure, and either look forward to or dread that unlikely moment. I've been Alex Shaw, be sure to rate and subscribe, and let us know in the comments what other obscure toy lines you'd like to see handled in this lightning-fast and bite-sized way. See you next time at Action Figure Resource, and of course you should check out the main website for all kinds of in-depth histories of your favourite toys. Action.
actionfigureresource.com. Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.